Hi, my name is Al Laspada, and I'm a professor in the departments of pediatrics, cellular and molecular medicine, and neurosciences at the UCSD School of Medicine. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about our latest work, which was just published in the journal Neuron on June 23, 2011. In 1995, the ataxin-7 gene was identified as the cause of spinocerebellar ataxia type 7, or SCA7 for short. SCA7 is a dominantly inherited disorder, and it's unique among the spinocerebellar degenerations because SCA7 patients also display retinal degeneration. We began our studies of SCA7 more than a decade ago when we created a transgenic mouse model for SCA7 retinal degeneration. This work, which was published in Neuron in 2001, demonstrated for the first time that SCA7 retinal degeneration results from transcription dysregulation. Further studies have established that ataxin-7 is an important transcription regulatory factor. For this reason, we decided to investigate how ataxin-7 gene expression is regulated. As you see here, the start site of translation and the CAG repeat both reside in exon 3 of the ataxin-7 gene. When we examined this region of the ataxin-7 gene for transcription regulatory elements, we discovered high probability calls for a promoter just 5' prime to exon 3. When we analyzed this region for ESTs, we discovered an EST in antisense orientation. We called the transcript SCANT1 for spinocerebellar ataxia antisense non-coding transcript 1. To study ataxin 7 transcription regulation, we created transgenic constructs that contain the region of interest on an approximately 13 kilobase genomic fragment. To evaluate the role of CTCF binding, we created two different transgenic constructs. One construct, SCA7 CTCF1 wild type, contains the genomic fragment with 92 CAG repeats. The other construct is identical to the first except that the 3' prime CTCF binding site has been mutated. We call this construct SCA7 CTCF1 mute. When we produced transgenic mice, we observed a surprising result. Mice created with the SCA7 CTCF1 mute construct developed a neurological phenotype characterized by ataxia. However, four independent lines created with the SCA7 CTCF1 wild type construct all appear normal. My name is Paula Ladd, and I'm a co-first author of this paper to delineate the role of the antisense non-coding RNA in regulating sense transcription. We measured the level of sense RNA and antisense GANT1 expression in the brains of SCA7 mice using quantitative RT-PCR. We found that the SCA7 CTCF1 mutant mice with the SCA7 phenotype have very high levels of sense RNA expression, but very little antisense SCANT1. The SCA7 CTCF1 wild type mice, however, produce very little sense RNA, but transcribe very high levels of the antisense SCANT1. We hypothesized that since P2A promoter activity and the antisense promoter activity at the ataxin 7 locus are inversely proportional, so we tested this in a range of human tissues and found this to be the case. As we present in our paper, the transcription of antisense SCANT1 is not merely coincident with the activation of the sense promoter. We show that SCANT1 transcription is directly regulating sense promoter activity, and that this regulation occurs in cis through a process of convergent transcription. We also find that the regulation of sense promoter activity by SCANT1 is chromatin dependent as SCA7 CTCF1 wild-type mice exhibit high levels of the repressive histone 3 lysine 27 trimethylation mark in the promoter P2A region. But SCA7 CTCF1 moot mice show low levels of this repressive mark and instead show elevated levels of histone 3 
lysine 9 14 acetylation. Our paper highlights a number of important emerging themes in our understanding of gene regulation in the brain. With the advent of high throughput genomic studies, we now know that the vast majority of our transcripts are non-coding. A major challenge going forward will be to determine what these non-coding RNA transcripts are doing. Given the complexity of our central nervous system, a multitude of non-coding RNAs are likely acting upon our genes to create a finely tuned system of transcription regulation in the brain. Our studies of SCA7 suggest that disease pathways can involve perturbation of such non-coding RNA regulation. By delineating how non-coding RNA regulation of genes is disrupted in neurological diseases, we should gain insights into the normal pathways by which genes in the CNS are so precisely regulated. And such knowledge may allow us to better understand how the human brain works.